later. Oh, it did me good to see the way that these brave men worked. How can women help loving men when they are so earnest, and so true, and so brave? And, too, it made me think of the wonderful power of money. What can it not do when it is properly applied? And what might it do when basely used? I felt so thankful that Lord Goodalming is rich, and that both he and Mr. Morris, who also has plenty of money, are willing to spend it so freely. For if they did not, our little expedition could not start, either so promptly or so well equipped, as it will within another hour. It is not three hours since it was arranged what part each of us was to do. And now Lord Godalming and Jonathan have a lovely steam launch, with steam up ready to start at a moment's notice. Dr. Seward and Mr. Morris have half a dozen beautiful horses, well appointed. We have all the maps and appliances of various kinds that can be had. Professor Van Helsing and I are to leave by the 11.40 train tonight to Veresti, where we are to get a carriage to drive to the Bogo Pass. We are bringing a good deal of ready money, as we are to buy a carriage and horses. We shall drive ourselves, but we have no one whom we can trust in the matter. The Professor knows something of a great many languages. So we shall get on all right. We have all good arms, even for me, a large bore revolver. Jonathan would not be happy unless I was armed like the rest. Alas, I cannot carry one arm that the rest do. The scar on my forehead forbids that. Dear Dr. Van Helsing comforts me by telling me that I am fully armed as there may be wolves. The weather is getting colder every hour, and there are snow flurries which come and go as warnings. 